So Katie Banks was actually quite lucky that she received a suspended sentence in court this week. Yeah. She's the former partner of Barry Young, who was jailed for 10 or 11 years for directing a criminal organisation in the Sligo area. And she's pleaded guilty to eight or nine counts of money laundering and one count of facilitating a criminal organisation. Yeah. So money has gone through her bank accounts and she has, while pleading guilty, said to the court that she didn't know her partner was involved in any drug activity until the police raided their home. Yeah. Well, I mean, she obviously, not to claim she didn't tell the full truth in, in, mm. in court, of course, but a simple Google would have told you that Barry Young's first conviction was over 20 years ago. That's what I was going to say. I mean, like, I mean, he's you know, that, that, Yeah, he's Googleable, and he has, he had that conviction that we used to always refer to. I think he was caught in a, a graveyard with a load of cannabis mm. many years ago. So a co- relatively minor conviction, but a conviction for sale or supply. But yeah, so, I mean, in fairness to her, the sums involved were of a relatively small scale. So if you compare her case to cases like uh, Deirdre Brady, the mm. partner of Mr. Nobody, Declan Brady, where you had this huge wealth going through the accounts, some of the money that was that, that she was uh, said to have lodged uh, were very small amounts. 300 euros was one of them. I think mm. there was, there was they were all, all in it four figures. It's a little bit of evidence that perhaps Barry Young might have been in the trouble that has been claimed that he owed so much money to the big organisation that he was literally operating essentially as a pawn to Mr. Big and that he was desperately um, trying to pay back. And, you know. Well, I think you see two things actually with this case. Um like we 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 discussed uh, at a previous date the John Gilligan strategy in the courts where people um where John Gilligan obviously went through many many years of mm. battles fought every fought to the nail for every penny but both Barry Young and now his former partner they both pled guilty at an early stage they both offered full some apologies for their activities and they both accepted total responsibility. Um, just a very interesting mm. kind of strategy. And again, it shows the other thing um, that that the the criminal justice system, the guards and the DPP are absolutely seem committed to going after the partners of these gangland figures. Now, in, in fairness, Katie, Katie Banks was, like the money that she was convicted of was a small scale. Mm. You know, I think... There was, you know, there was a 300 euros, there was a hundred euros. I think there was 3,800 euros and another, another sum of money that went These through her accounts. Through the credit union and the bank. She is a mother, yeah. um, the court was told. And she also claimed that she has been manipulated um, by and controlled by Young since she was a young teenager, obviously yeah. since their relationship began. Uh, now he hasn't much to lose. It could be quite manly for him to say, you know, he give me a, blame it on me. He could. Um, but look, I mean, she met him when she was 18. Uh, she, Her solicitor in court described her as being manipulated and controlled and in a toxic relationship with, with Barry Young. Um, and that, you know, she was 18 when she met him. Uh, he was almost a decade older. So there was a big age gap and that she was naive and that um, she turned her life around to become a carer. So look, I mean, uh, I always have more sympathy than you for the women, don't I? No, I don't have no sympathy for her at all. I just think she's lucky she didn't get a custodial sentence. I mean, I suppose these are her first criminal convictions and she still will have them. But given the amount of counts of money laundering, and we have seen so many others going to jail for money laundering, um, she was at risk of being put away for a period of time. Absolutely. And it was over a short enough period of time. Uh, she was done for facilitating a crime gang over basically over a year, February 2019 to 2020. And the money laundering occurred within an 18 month period, roughly the same. So I just think that I have to say that the, the young enterprise down there, Sligo, and what has been going on, you know, behind the scenes has been quite extraordinary. These individuals sometimes will come to court with a story that will facilitate them getting a lesser sentence. Yeah. That's undoubted. So it's difficult as a cynical crime reporter to completely <laughs> believe everything we're told in those circumstances. But when Barry Young himself came before the courts pleading guilty and his sentence hearing heard that he was living under this immense stress, um, that life was pretty 
shit. And he was quite glad, really, when the police came for him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like it's, 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 yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't a advertisement for the, the life of crime, was it? It certainly wasn't. But I mean, we do know, I suppose, from our own sources that he certainly was operating as a bit of a lackey and under, um, you know, under that sort of powerhouse that is Mr. Big. Yeah. And he was dealing into the North, had many connections up in the North. Um, he comes up in the case the state are presenting in the North in relation to the um, murder of Robbie Lawler. He, his contact, Aidan Holland, is before the courts charged um, in relation to that murder and he's denying it, uh, pleading not guilty, but bail hearings have heard evidence that the PSNI will state that he went to Sligo to meet Barry Young and that's where that murder was organised. Yeah, Obviously, Holland's team will state different. He, they will claim that he was just friends with Young and he had an issue with his car, which is why he met up with Barry Young. But two very different scenarios there. But nonetheless, he was involved with the likes of Holland and it was in his grandmother's front garden where Robbie Lawler was was shot dead. So, you know, his from his location, his geographical location in Sligo, um, that territory probably does control a lar- large part of the north or certainly does dealings with them. Um, obviously, Mr. Big is a very prominent criminal, so he's involved in that. But, you know, would it be completely true to say that he was literally you know, on his knees and just doing his bidding. And like, we know other things about Barry Young. We do know in the past that he brought Mark Desmond down to the Sligo area to clean up his um Basically, his debts. as an enforcer. I mean, so it's interesting, all right, like for, for such a, a, a troubled and nice guy that Barry Young presented himself in court, he does seem to keep bad company. He does. Like like yeah. uh, Mark, Mark the guinea pig Desmond was one of the most feared and violent criminals in the underworld. Uh, Mr. Big, again, has a reputation and has been linked to numerous murders, including the murder of the real IRA boss, Alan Ryan. So, yeah, but I suppose Barry Young came and pled guilty. And what happens in the courts then are that his defence solicitors, because he's given a guilty plea and he's accepted responsibility, they get a bit of free reign to put forward a narrative. That's their job. Yeah. You know, that's what they're meant to do. Um you know, Barry Young, um, in that court case, he described as living with living full of fear and full of anxiety and, you know, at times battling with, with thoughts of not wanting to go on uh, and being relieved when the police came in. And it would give you the impression of somebody who was as, uh, you know, yeah, merely a ghillie who was being forced to do various things that he wasn't comfortable doing. The contradictory part of that, of course, is that... Um, Last year, um, CAB raided a couple of properties in conjunction with the Spanish police over in Spain. Um, Barry Young, while describing himself almost as somebody who was just trying to uh, rob Peter to pay Paul, effectively been struggling to to fulfil debts um, over in Spain, he'd amassed a couple of properties, it is believed. Um, and then also, you know, even in that Barry Young case, you would hear of the levels of violence that that was used to enforce debts, how Barry Young used to uh, basically get freelance criminals to go down and attack people or threaten people. Um, so, look, I and suppose... Desmond, of course, you know, notoriously was somebody known for using the the tool of rape to, in order to instill fear in anybody that was owed money or he was trying to get money off. So, I mean, a particularly nasty character. And obviously was close enough to Young to go down and work for him yeah. um, before he was murdered himself. Yeah, so look, these guys, I actually imagine it is very stressful being a, a, being a top drug dealer. I wouldn't say it's uh, for the faint hearted. I mean, I'm sure if if you sat uh, Daniel Kinnan down or, or El Chapo and I'm obviously... Mm-hmm. Barry Young isn't on that level, but if you sat them down and said, "Is this, you know, how you, you're nice and relaxed there doing the, the old drug dealing, I'm sure they're not. Like, I'm sure it is stressful, but I mean, it, there's there has to be a thing of, um, uh, you know, a choice that is made. Um, the so, PS and I have described Barry Young as an international 
yeah. uh, running an international And, and that, is, that is no doubt what he was doing. Um, they were, or did he just have a gaffe in Spain? No, no. He, he was, it certainly was the belief that he was um, arranging deals over there um, and facilitating the movement of drugs into the in, in, importation of drugs into the country. Remember, again, he was caught in a particular snapshot mm. of time. Um, mostly to do with the WhatsApp messages yeah, that he left on. Yeah, 16,000 of them. Yeah, so that's what he was done for. Yeah. It's a snapshot and you mm. saw his operation there and he pled guilty mm. within that context to, to what he pled guilty and a lot of it was movements of cannabis. But there's no doubt, I mean, even in in the case against him, he was described as being an international drug dealer. And if, I'm sure being, an, again, being an international drug dealer probably is stressful, but, you know, he, he described wanting to get caught, but of course he was, and maybe he was in a life that's hard to step out of, but he still chose to be, there and do what he did and to enforce the debts that built up to him with the most extreme violence. And he also chose that career path a long time ago. It must be 20 years since he first went to war, essentially, with the then uh, probably biggest drug dealing operation in Sligo, the Irwins. Yes. And, you know, as a young man, he had a crew around him and was willing to go to war. Now, there wasn't you know, Sligo wasn't overrun with gun crime because of the sort of feuds between the rival gangs. But there had been uh, certainly one murder and other attempted shootings yeah. um, centred on the Irwin's sort of uh, ability to hold the power down there. And Huey Irwin eventually moved to Lanzarote because of attempts on his life. His brother Patrick Irwin took over the operation and Barry Young and Patrick Irwin were very much two alpha males in that area um, fighting for, you know, fighting to win. If, if it's, you can look at it as simply as that. Irwin, of course, was caught with cocaine, 70,000 quids worth of cocaine, and he was sent off to prison. Yeah. And the Criminal Assets Bureau went through his um, goods and chattels. Yeah. As only they can. Yeah, I mean, look, it... But his his... His imprisonment left Barry Young free to do, I mean, again, this is in very simple terms, but free to take over that whole turf, which he, he went on to do. He went on to do. And so to he's do. obviously got certain abilities and facilities and... Oh, look, I think he he's had... certainly been painted, and as she has there, is that there are two sort of vulnerable people that... yeah. Well, he definitely, Barry Young had, I think, different connections than, than like Patrick Irwin was broadly linked in with the, the Kinnahan bloodline, if you or DNA mm. line, which mm. was true, like the Don, who were all Kinnahan, supplied by the Kinnahans, yeah. the Don, or there was others as well in North Dublin that he was linking up with. And Barry Young seems to have had a different supply, basically to miss their big network. Now, of course, all these things you know, these networks are, interact with each other and move around. But it was broadly a kind of an, a, a, a comp competition. Like there was Lidl and Aldi. Yeah. Not to libel yeah. supermarket chains, but <laughs> they had they had a different supply what network. What they want to advertise with us? Well, like, <laughs> oh, well, I mean, that could be dropped by lawyers. It's a totally <laughs> different thing, but <laughs> there is an analogy there. But yeah, so look, um, he definitely became a major player, not just in the drugs trade and not mm. just in the cannabis trade, which most of what we heard about uh, in court was that snapshot of that cannabis trade. But he definitely became, uh, played a role in the facilitation of extreme violence across the country. And um, look, I think in fairness to uh, Katie Banks, her story is vastly different than Barry Young, which the courts recognised, and they gave her a they gave her a fully suspended sentence of eighteen months, and I think two hundred and forty hours of community service. Um, and like she was a young person, who mm. an eighteen year old girl who who certainly uh, maybe got in over her head, and you know she's entitled to rehabilitate herself away from that. But yeah, it is a funny experience when you go into court and you hear. Um, Mm. community work and yeah. not in this case but in many cases you've 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 heard you've got calls all about people being violent and volatile and murders and, and then they're guns. stressed out and they're living in this nightmare yeah. scenario yeah, and, and they're they, so glad to be taken out of and it and they nearly always were a, could have, a promising footballer who could yeah. have become a professional either or boxer or whatever yeah. and so like you hear and look people have, have complex sides to them no doubt but Barry Young and um, you know, he'll be a relatively young man when he gets out. 
Um, he. It was clever to plead guilty. I think so. I think I think you've seen very a lot, much so. But I think you've seen a cultural change actually. Um, um, again, you know, he was done for directing criminal organisation as was his partner, not directing, but she was done under that same legislation. Facilitating. Facilitating the activities of a crime gang. People that are coming before the courts on those charges, there has been a cultural change where we're seeing, I, I'd love, we should probably should work it out what level of, mm. what's the percentage of people pleading guilty at a relatively early stage. But we're just seeing it again and again. Mm. People are, are, you know, whether they look at that book of evidence and feel that is going to be provable in mm -hmm. a way that, that you know, other charges have not been in the past. And it just doesn't seem, uh, not a lot of people are taking a punt on it and pleading not guilty. And you see Barry Young, uh, 20 years, maybe plus in the business, and he's only 39 now. Yeah. And he has his 11 years to serve in jail, which he'll get to, his remission You know, eight on, or whatever. You know, to... and his good behaviour and he'll probably get days out and whatnot. But I mean... He's not just the only guy there because he has developed a network over all those years. So that business probably continues to to grow, to make him money. Yeah. He's one of those drug dealers that's probably got to a stage where he's making money in his sleep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's it's definitely that those links into the north, which was at one point a difficult enough place to break into. And you'd wonder, how is it working? Was there supply coming from the north or was he supplying from the south to the north? I think supplying from the south to the north. I think there was obviously the, the north is such a unique situation um, that pre-ceasefire um, the paramilitaries had an oversight role into the drugs business. I mean it's always in great dispute what level of, of actual control they had there. But as that generation of, of paramilitaries and drug dealers kind of grew up and went into their 40s and 50s, there has been a younger generation who really started to emerge emer and they kind of went under the radar for a period of time. And both from both communities up in the north um, seem to have been willing to deal with people down the south and get drugs where before I think the, the loyalist communities were really getting drugs from Liverpool, from English gangsters. I think there was a change there. But the EncroChat stuff is showing us that it's moving both directions. Yes. You know what I mean? Belfast is a deep sea port itself yeah. and, you know, it would be seen as a place where drugs could be landed. Yeah. There's a lot of containers coming in there. It's a busy port like. Um, a lot of the haulage has come in through that route, through Belfast, and maybe been moved on down to the south. So it's both directions, really. It's both directions. And if you look at the Thomas Marr case, which was obviously Thomas Marr was was linked to the uh, the tragic deaths of a number of of illegal refugees in a in a in a shipping container. Um, he wasn't convicted of that, but that he he was arrested, and that sort of exposed his. Mm his logistical operation and he moved between the north and the south seamlessly and the UK mm. moved back and forth not just moved drugs into countries moved money out as well and you could see that kind of interconnectedness and also how the moving across borders uh, while it might be complex for them to do it also kind of that moving between jurisdictions can be hard for police forces to trace and keep a keep on top of so Thomas Meyer was a great example of, mm. of you know he had operations across the border all the time and you know exactly you know drugs are coming in money is going out and it's just all a carousel a big carousel and and the, anywhere they can see an opening they're getting the drugs in yes and you know and and the reality of the drugs trade is the it's going to be drones if yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the, yeah. I mean, look, the prison, the drones are coming into prisons. But I mean, exactly. Every the, there's every because of the money that's mm. there, um, every piece of human ingenuity goes into it at some point, isn't it? Mm -hmm. No opportunities are missed. No opportunities are missed. The rewards are huge, and there is still a belief that you know, if you do it really smartly, you can get away with it. And maybe more than anything, that's what the anchor chat hack. Uh, exposed, it exposed that kind of layer of people that weren't shooting people and hitting the papers, um, but were just the logistical, the real, the the, mm. the blood flow of the whole business. I think loads of them were effectively unknown before that anchor chat hack. I, you know, mm -hmm. they 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 weren't 
suspected of things. I suppose really going back just briefly to Katie Banks, um, there was a time when a woman could, you know, expect no notoriety whatsoever for yeah. the relationships. But I think she's another just example of, as you said earlier on there, how those women are constantly being targeted now. It's now part of the new police plan yeah. um, and the new targeting of organised criminals. There's, there isn't a woman, I don't think, that has no. been left no. uh, in the background in any of these investigations. No, no. and, you know, it is... It does make a type of sense as a deterrent, I suppose, um, because if the money can't be spent by you and it can't be spent by your loved ones, I mean, what is the point, I suppose? Um, you know, obviously the money that goes into bank accounts is only the tip of the iceberg as well. There'll be lots of money sloshing around. But if 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 all the people around you are are fearful of becoming a target. It must it must be a deterrent and must make the, the business less attractive. And sure, look, we're seeing it, aren't we, Dave? Some people can't spend the money that they're making. For sure. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Nicola. I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts.